So this install is going to be a little bit different. Why? Because we're in the water. And show you what it looks like when the PSS valve fails. It's not ideal. Uh, I just want to remove it, get rid of it so I can sleep at night. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hi guys. Today we've got some pretty cool products that we're going to be installing in the boat. We've purchased these, this was our choice. Aren't sponsored, we are not paid. This is just a personal preference of what I'm going to install on the boat. A shaft seal, but it is a lip seal. So this is what we'll be installing. It's a Tides Marine lip seal. It's a little bit different to the one that's on the boat. So the one on the boat's very common. It's a PSS of our, very well known in the industry. I personally don't like it. I really like this one. It's a completely different setup to the PSS that we have on the boat. Not that there's anything wrong with the PSS seals. This is just a different choice of seal and I'll explain why. Okay, so the PSS valve, the one on the boat, has a flexible bellow. It relies on uh, the bellow for pressure onto like a carbon graphite flange and that's where it gets its seal. So it's like a face seal. This is a lip seal, similar to like an engine, and that's the seal I'm going for. There's a few reasons why I'm going for this seal. We all love redundancy in anything we have on a vessel. So if for some reason this seal is to fail, this is where this comes into play. This is a spare seal. It's actually the housing is just a carrier. So this will be carried on the shaft in front of our lip seal so if this seal was to fail for some reason we could unscrew this we could remove the old seal and we could slide down a new seal so job done without hauling without any fuss also in the process of changing the seal which we're about to find out how much water comes through this seal as opposed to the PSS seal that's on the boat so as you can see here, it's almost like a uh, cutlass bearing. There's not much room around the shaft there apart from a few slots there to let the water through. So even with the seal removed, there isn't going to be a great deal of water coming out of here once the lip seal does fail. So I'll give you an example of a failed uh, PSS valve if I can find one but I'm also going to make my one fail on the boat too and show you what it looks like when the PSS valve fails and show you what it looks like when I don't even have a lip seal in this so and we'll see the difference but all in all it's pretty simple it's personal preference guys I'm gonna give this one a go I really like it I love the redundancy of having a spare seal I like the fact that we're not relying on the bellow for compression so if something fails, it's catastrophic to the boat. So this install is going to be a little bit different. Why? Because we're in the water. It's not ideal. There is a reason behind this, why I'm doing it in the water. We were going to haul out the boat and that's ideal. It makes the job really easy. But we have other problems. Usually it's not just one problem in a boat, it's three or four. So what we have is we have this seal that's old on the boat, the PSS one. I need to remove the gearbox at the moment to get to another lip seal that's failed on the engine. So we have a, a rear main seal on the end of the engine that is leaking oil. So in order to get to that, I have to slide the shaft back, I have to slide out the gearbox and so on to get to the lip seal. So I thought, I'm going to all this work, I might as well just get it done, I have the product. I've been told it can be done, so we're gonna have a go at it. So we've had a trip down the coast, we've only done 60 miles down, and we've turned around and come 60 miles back up. Now, on the way back up, we've had a little bit of vibration, and as a result, I would say that's why our rear main seal on the engine has failed too. Could be age, could be coincidence, either or either. I have to get to the engine rear main oil seal. In that process, I have to slide back our existing shaft, which is has the PSS seal on it, which I don't like, it's old. And I have a new one, which is new, so it makes sense to put this on. It's not ideal, we're in the water, but I'll make it work. So forward of our lip seal 
is a thrust bearing, which I think it could be the cause of a bit of vibration at high revs. So I'm gonna inspect and replace maybe. In between here in the gearbox, it's like, they call it an aqua drive, I think, which is sort of like a universal joint, CV joint, which allows you to have a lot greater tolerance with your shaft alignment, which is good, but I'm gonna inspect that. Like I said, inspect the bearing, inspect the joint, and then I'll remove the gearbox, and then I'll be at my lip seal for the engine. It's a bit of a process, and on top of all that, I'll do the engine mount. I'm gonna bite off a little bit more than I can chew on, but I'm gonna chew like hell and we'll get through it. We're gonna start back here and work our way to the engine and see how we go. You got this. So I'm gonna take you down below here. This is in the aft cabin. This is where our shaft from our engine, forward of us now, runs through and comes out the stern of the boat. So below us here, we have our seal that we're replacing. In this case, a PSS valve. Also, we have a little bit of shaft and then we have our coupling, which we'll be removing. So we can slide our shaft back, followed by, you should see the tail end of it when I take you down below of our thrust bearing, which I'll inspect and replace. And I have a slight suspicion that's where I'm getting the vibration from. Hopefully it's not forward of that which is our uh, joint, so like a CV joint. So we'll inspect that when we get to it. But for now, keep our eyes on the prize and it's the seal to start with. Here's our shaft. This unit here is the original PSS valve. So from what I can gather, this has got a fair bit of age on it. I'm not even gonna look at the serviceable side of it. Uh, I just wanna remove it, get rid of it so I can sleep at night. This here is the rotor, it has two o-rings under here followed by some little set screws to hold it in place so you're relying on this plate here to be nice and snug around this carbon fiber graphite flange and this is what what seals here so as the shaft spins it seals against that surface like i say these are in so many boats and they work it's just this has got age and i don't want it Pretty simple. If this isn't set with enough pressure, this can leak. Not only can it leak, once water starts coming in, it won't have enough pressure in here to stop the water coming in. So in this case, it could be age, could prevent this from sealing properly or from the installation if there's not enough pressure set back on that. I haven't installed one. I just know that people that have had problems with them. And like I say, they're in a lot of boats and they work for a lot of people. It's just something that needs to be looked at, serviced, and uh, not let too much age get on it. This is the bellow here, which keeps the pressure against the face here. And pretty much it's just got a couple of pipe clips to, uh, pipe clamps to hold it all together. There's not too much with that. It's pretty simple. They work, they work on many boats. It's just we're changing this one out. These two units are very similar in length, like nearly identical. There's only one concern I have with this installation, because I have here the lip seal. The actual, I've actually got the uh, measurement here and come back from the face. If I was to install this exactly how the old one was, the only thing that concerns me is if I put this down here, it just happens to work out these set screws here actually line up exactly with where my lip seal sits in here. So what I intend to do, I've already started this project by, I've just given this a light going over with some 400 just to shine it up to see what I've got to work with and make sure there's no burrs anywhere. So this part of the shaft so far looks good, but where these set screws attach to the shaft, I'm pretty sure that there's gonna be some indentations and imperfections on the shaft from this. So what I intend to do is I'm gonna undo these. I'm gonna slide this back a little bit. It's gonna put a lot of pressure on this. I'm gonna see what's under here to start with, and then I'm gonna start the engine up. Just rotate it, and I'm gonna clean the face up again. So what I'm gonna do is work out a measurement so that this new lip seal sits either forward of where these set screws attach to the shaft or behind the set screws. I'm probably going to favor in front of the set screws. So therefore any replacement removal installation is not gonna be dragging a lip seal over anything that's gonna 
give the lip seal damage. First things first, we'll, we'll remove all that, slide it back and see what we've got to work with, and then go from there. This here is the coupling, which attaches to the thrust bearing. So we'll have to unbolt this, slide the shaft back and remove this so the new seal can uh, slide over the shaft. Obviously there'll be a lot more cleaning under here. There's a keyway here that we'll um, have to remove and just, just give it all a tidy up. All right guys, just before I get down in there and show you how a uh, PSS valve can fail, I didn't actually speak about these here. These are just uh, water inlets that supply water to the lip seal so it doesn't get too hot. I'll be taking the water from the engine. It comes through the raw water pump on the engine, pushes through the engine, and then what's left is gonna flow back through here. Obviously up through a vented loop so we don't have any siphoning of water going into the engine. That being said, there's two on here. I only need one. This is actually designed for if you've got a twin screw and you can run a loop over to your next shaft. In our case, we don't need it. I don't know what I'll do yet. I'm just gonna probably put a loop together for now. And uh, I may just put a T or cap one off, either either. But uh, that's just our water intake there. All these bolts down here have had the penetrating oil. This stuff is awesome. So prior to the job, I'd actually soaked this a couple of weeks back, uh, all the bolts. And I've just soaked it again today. And uh, by the time I get to them, they should uh, come off pretty easy, hopefully. I've just loosened these and I've tapped this collar back now and you can see here there is the imprint of the grub screw on the shaft and the only thing I don't want is for our lip seal to go anywhere near that so I'm going to aim for around halfway between there and where it originally was this here was originally sitting on this black line I mark there and there's the grub screw mark that's damaged the shaft now do not want the lip seal sitting on that because it will damage the lip seal. I'm going to tighten these grub screws back up. I'm going to put the uh, motor into gear and I'm just going to lightly spin this part of the shaft now and just see how nice I can get this area. I'm going to be looking at 20 mil. I can pretty sure I can get it within the mil anyway, but I work on a 20 mil gap where I really want that surface to be really nice no burrs, no jagged bits, no, just a nice smooth shaft. I'm just gonna attack it a little bit different than what I was originally gonna do. I've had to play with my tolerances um, where I wanna position this. I was just gonna put it all together and bang it on, but there's a slight bit of pitting where the existing ring was. So I've positioned exactly where I want my lip seal to sit. I just want to avoid where the pitting was so I don't ruin my lip seal. So initially I'm just going to bring forward the lip seal a little bit, about 15 mil, so it sits on some perfectly faced up sanded stainless steel shaft. I'm trying to play it over in my head how it's all going to go because there's going to be a lot of water going on in here. I'm not, I don't want to damage any of the existing PSS valve, just in case something, you just never know, sometimes things just don't go to plan, and I have to reassemble the PSS. So if that's the case, we can do that also. So I'm not sure what the actual stern tube looks like, so hopefully I'm gonna have someone holding their hand, trying to stop the water. It's gonna to be to somewhat acceptable, but there's still gonna be pretty wet down there. Um, I may just get a bit of sandpaper and just clean up the face on the stern tube. Pretty much, hopefully I can just really take our new one and slide it on and it should be pretty instant, the stop of water. This here, I've just put a loop on here just temporarily. I don't want all lines hanging off while I'm trying to work on it. But this will be the injection line to cool the stern gland. So I'll leave it like that. I've just looped it over for now. And once it's all finished and how I, I want it, then I can plumb in that line after. That's no biggie. Okay, so this face here was originally in line with that mark on the shaft there. There's a couple of little, you can see that's the round mark here that's made from the set screw here. And then obviously the face had a bit of corrosion. So there's a couple of little, I just, they're not bad, but I just don't want my lip seal sitting on it. So our new one will sit here, but the lip seal, and it goes back a little bit, so it'll sit probably five mil forward of that little bit of a rough spot and the rest of that shaft perfect. So I'm just gonna move it forward five mil 
so the seal sits on a nice bit of shaft. So the other thing, I'm not sure yet how much distance we'll have with the shaft and we'll see how far we can move it down, whether I assemble half of this up here or whether I slide on um, these two separately, but sliding it on, this unit here will have this, which is a sleeve. So this will be pushed in here and that will protect the O-ring as I slide it down the shaft. Same as the carrier, I haven't got it here next to me, but the spare seal will go on top of here and this will carry it down to position and then I'll remove that. So this initially just stops the um, seal from getting damaged if there's any burrs. The part you can see is perfectly clean. I'm not sure what's under the coupling. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, I don't want to have that much water in the boat. So if we can't contain it, I'll be going to plan B. Well, I don't know what that is yet. I'm just going to touch the bellow and separate it a little bit and just see actually how much water can come in through a PSS valve if it does fail, let go, not installed properly, has a whatever it may be. If a PSS valve leaks, this is what it's going to look like. This here is the bellow. So for whatever reason, if the pressure was not to be maintained here or there was a split in this bellow from age or a malfunction of some sort, water would come in like so. Now, sometimes there's not enough pressure in the bellow to seal back up. So you could imagine how quick things can uh, go pear-shaped from then on in. It's actually getting me a little bit worried whether we should be doing the job. <laughs> Can we stop this? Another reason I'm actually doing this too is I wanted to get the lip seal out of the road so I don't have any more salt and I can get some salt away and wash down the bilge area again and get it all nice and clean because I have a dry bilge or most of the time apart from now showing you guys how a uh, lip seal can fail and how much water comes out behind that. So if your bellow was to fail that's pretty much what you'd see coming in and if that bellow was to remain open with the pressure of the water you'd want to hope you've got a, a big enough bilge pump and battery supply to uh, keep up with that flow of water putting a couple of witness marks here so got a couple of little marks here i've used with this punch um, when i go to reassemble this i know i've got my line up here i've actually put another little mark just straight there so i can see where the crack is here on the shaft um, it just means everything goes back exactly how it was probably don't need to do that but if something's not right or something slightly out this is the way it was installed this is the way i'm going to put it back together yeah pull this apart and see how we go Just disappeared then. Mm -hmm. It's going back. It's got to be just about it, I think. Contain that mm -hmm. now. Okay. So I've got to remove this, clean behind that. Yeah. Not too much, but just enough. Yeah. And then we've got to remove this. Then we've got to remove this. 
And then it's just a matter of we're going to have another one behind it. But as soon as you contain the one behind it, I'll have access to this whole front section. Oh, yeah. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So before I started banging this thing so off. Do you think so I might slide that with your hand still there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to slide this back again and then okay. I'm going to try and see if I can remove the other one. I'll just get your one over there. Get it out. Mm -hmm. Just don't let it squirt everywhere. I'm going to do that. <clears throat> I just replaced me with the zippy tie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm a little bit of water like that, that's fine. Hopefully that flange comes off and we can get this on. Okay. Do you see how we're going to do it now? I just left that there just until the last minute. I thought that might tap off. It's got a big split down it. Well, there you have it. Someone wasn't prepared. <laughs> it's all right. I just wanted to see if it would slide off. I just can't bang the flange. I don't want to bend it, bend anything. I just gave a little tap to see if it would come apart, but clearly not. I need the pullers. So we could potentially sink while we're sleeping tonight. No, I'll bolt it back together. <laughs> Why? I don't want to do it again. That was nerve wracking. All that water pouring into the boat. That's possible. We know it's possible now, so that's good. All right, so he's going to put it back together and we are going to show you again tomorrow. <laughs> Term number one. Probably go make dinner now and go to bed and wake up and do it all again tomorrow. Luckily, we have bikes now, so we can easily go get one. All right, he's going to take a trip to Harbour Freight tomorrow and we'll be back. So stay tuned. Alright, he's tightened it back up. It's all safe and secure for the night. Uh, it was so fun, we'll just do it all again tomorrow. We're so close. Ah, oh, it's annoying. We were so close. Try again tomorrow. <laughs>